Good day everyone. I'm Michael. And I am using a text-to-speech program to have a more clear speech and audio. For this video lesson, I will be going to demonstrate how to add page to our mobile app. We are also going to add button to the page. Define the purpose of XAML file and C Sharp to the project. And call display alert method using click event. It would be better if you open your computer and follow what I will demonstrate. You could pause and play the video to get along with exercise. In Xamarin Forms we use XAML, this is an XML based language to define the visual appearance of our apps. And we use code behind to implement how the user interface behaves. So let us now start the exercise. What we are going to do is create a new project using Visual Studio. Then go to search bar and search for mobile. Select mobile app Xamarin Forms. Click next. Then name the project as Hello TUP. Here you can see that there are three template to be choose of. But for this presentation, we will be using the blank template. After creating the app, go to Solution Explorer. Then you will see the solution node, the shared code, the .NET and NuGet references, application definition, and head projects. What are we going to do next is to add new page to our project. Under Solution Explorer, right-click Shared Code. Click Add. Then select New Item. On the left side of the Add New Item dialog box, Click Xamarin.Forms. This will list down pages or views under Xamarin Forms. What are we going to do is to create a content page using XAML. But as you can see, there are two content page available. To identify which one is for XAML, click one of the content page. At the right side of the dialog box, there is a short description for item that is being selected. So this one is a content page using XAML. And this one is a content page using C Sharp. So I want you to click this one and name it as Greet Page. Then click Add. So this will add two files to our project. One is greetpage.xaml. And if you expand it, here is the code behind, which is a C Sharp class. Now I want you to open the greetpage.xaml. This content page tag represent the type of this page. There are other type of pages used in Xamarin. We content page, master detail page, navigation page, carousel, and so on. Inside content page. There are two XAML namespace declarations that are always within the root element of a XAML file. The first defines the default namespace, it is owned by Xamarin. It's for elements with no prefix, like content page tag. The second namespace declaration uses the X prefix. XAML uses prefixes to declare non-default namespaces, with the prefix being used when referencing types within the namespace. The X namespace declaration specifies that elements defined within the XAML with a prefix of X are used for elements and attributes that are intrinsic to XAML, specifically the 2009 XAML specification. The following table outlines the X namespace attributes supported by Xamarin Forms. X colon arguments specifies constructor arguments for a non-default constructor or for a factory method object declaration. X colon class specifies the namespace and class name for a class defined in XAML. The class name must match the class name of the code behind file. Note that this construct can only appear in the root element of a XAML file. X colon data type 
specifies the type of the object that the XAML element and its children will bind to. X colon factory method specifies a factory method that can be used to initialize an object. X colon field modifier specifies the access level for generated fields for named XAML elements. X colon key specifies a unique user-defined key for each resource in a resource dictionary. The key's value is used to retrieve the XAML resource and is typically used as the argument for the static resource markup extension. X colon name specifies a runtime object name for the XAML element. Setting X colon name namespace is similar to declaring a variable in code. X colon type arguments specifies the generic type arguments to the constructor of a generic type. Look at this X colon class. This class is belong to the Microsoft namespace. The value assigned to it is hello tup.greet page, which is composed of the name of our project and the name of this page. Using X class attribute, we established a link between our XAML file and code behind file. So now let's start modifying the page we just created. First, we must delete the content page.content and its content and add a button. As you can see, upon completing the opening tag for a button, it is automatically added a closing tag. That is one of the benefits of using an IDE, like a Visual Studio. I want to put this button in the middle of the screen, so we will add an attribute's name horizontal options, and set its value to center. Then vertical options, with a value of center too. Next is to add the text attribute to give it a value of greet. So this is a XAML file, we are defining the appearance of our page. Now, what about the behavior? What we want to do is upon tapping the button, the app should display an alert message. In Xamarin Forms, there is an event called, clicked. So we're going to add the event. As you can see it automatically add open and close quotation marks. We just press enter and it automatically names the click event for our button. Now if we go to the code behind file of the page. We will see the event that was automatically generated upon adding the event attribute to the button. It has two arguments. One is the object which is the sender or source of the event. And the next one is an event args, which bring additional details about that event. Now let's add an implementation for this event. The objective of this activity is to display an alert message upon pressing or tapping the button. We call the display alert method. Here, you can see that you can call this method in four different ways. But for this video, we are going to call the method using three arguments with a data type of a string. First, we input the title, let's input greet. Then the message we would like to display. Let's input hello, tup. And for the last argument, let's just put OK. Potentially, we could supply another button, like OK and Cancel, or Yes or No. But for this lesson, we don't have to worry about it. The Greet page is now ready. We just have to set our page to be the main page. To set this page as main page, go back to the Solution Explorer. Go to our shared code, which is Hello TUP. Then expand the app.xaml file and open the code behind file, which is the app.xaml.cs. You can see that the value of main page property is currently set to new main page. 
So what we are going to do is to change its value to the page that we created, and that is greet page. Now we are ready to run the app. I assume that you already configure your mobile phone to run the Xamarin code. Or you could use an emulator. If you haven't done that, refer to other video lesson on how to configure your device and use an emulator. Let's run this app using an emulator. The speed of running and loading the emulator will depend from the computer's specs. Now we're back. On the left side of the screen is the emulator. And that is the greet page that we've made. As you can see, the button is in the center of the screen. Remember that we set the horizontal and vertical options attribute of the button to the center. Now, if I press the button, there it is, it displays an alert message with the arguments that we've set. Before we end the exercise, I will show one of the new features of Visual Studio 2019. It is called Hot Reload. With Hot Reload you can now modify your app's managed source code while the application is running, without the need to manually pause or hit a breakpoint. Simply make a supported change while your app is running. Remember, only the supported change. Change on code behind is currently not supported. So what I'm about to show you is more on the updating of the XAML file. Let's go to our XAML file. And let us modify the button. For a cleaner and more readable code, we can put other attributes of the button on a separate line. Now let's edit the horizontal options. As you can see, the update of the emulator is pretty fast, which is a good thing, especially if you're working on the UI. That's all for this video lesson. If you have questions, suggestions, something to add, or you think something is missing or incorrect to the lesson, please let me know. Again, this is Michael, thank you and see you at my next video lesson. Keep safe everyone.